Today is Wednesday, October 21st, 2020, and welcome to another edition of Wildcat Weekly. Hi, everybody. I'm your host, Joe Krause. We thank you all for joining us. If this is the first time you're watching our show, thanks for clicking on the play button, no matter how you heard about our show. And if this is another time for you, thanks for stopping on by. We have another great guest coming for you this week. In case you didn't know already, Wildcat Weekly is the number one show where you can meet your student athletes and your coaches. They're going to talk about their past success with the Wildcats, the upcoming season, hopefully coming later this winter, depending on how things shape out with COVID, and what it's meant to them to be part of the Damon College community. As always, we're on social media. Follow us on Twitter at Damon Athletics. Like our Facebook page, Damon College Athletics, and visit our website, DamonWildcats.com. We have a lot of great content coming for you this semester. Our Wildcat Social Series is up and running, as well as the Student Athlete Spotlight. My cohort, Mike Maranto, has an alumni series catching up with former Wildcats, what they have done out in the world since they left Main Street. And just recently, I had the pleasure of talking with John Metz and Redshirt senior Eric Stoey from the Demon Triathlon team. I talked with them about the growth of the triathlon program the past six years, and they're getting ready to go for another season, hopefully this upcoming spring. Again, all that and more is at your pleasure at Demon Wildcats. Com. Our guest tonight is neither a player or a coach, but he's a pretty well-known face here on the campus of Damon College. For 26 years, he served in a variety of roles, and I just want to make sure I get all this covered for you. He has been related to athletic training, strength and conditioning, and general health care, and has been an integral part in growing Demon's sports medicine and performance office. More importantly, and more recently, he's been an integral part. We could call him the point guard of how uh, Damon College has combated the COVID-19 crisis, keeping the numbers down. He's been a big part since the outbreak started in late February, early March. And his schedule was so busy, we are so thankful that he had the time to spend a few minutes with us this week to talk about how Damon's combating COVID-19 and what it's meant for him to be part of the Damon family since we said the past 26 years. Please welcome the Assistant Athletic Director of Sports and Medicine to Wildcat Weekly, Mr. Jess Sage. And we are here with Mr. Jeff Sage, the Damon Assistant Athletic Director of Sports and Medicine. Jeff, thanks for joining us this afternoon. How are you? Doing well. How are you? I'm doing well. And I guess, um, you know, I guess these past few months have been very hectic. I know uh, you just got off before we started just figuring out another situation but i guess for you mentally physically um i know you ask us all the time how are we feeling but but how are you during these past few months here well thank you for asking it's 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 been a drain um it's it's been a real drain with um not just not just ramping up athletics but uh being on the uh, emergency response team with the campus, uh, being involved with testing, and 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 uh, as that continues and contact tracing, it's it's been a lot, um, and you know it continues to be. But you know we take it day by day, and you know we we're here for the students, and and that's what we do. We appreciate everything that you and uh, the response team has done so far. It's been about seven months now since this whole uh, pandemic began. I guess for the viewers at home, what were maybe the first initial steps for getting this current semester off the ground? Oh boy, there were so many steps. Uh, the initial thing was once once it appeared as though you know the state was moving in a direction where Western New York was was entering phase four, which is where things were opening back up. Uh, institutions, uh, we basically opened the college opened as a business first. Uh, and then we, and that was during the summer. And then we proceeded following state guidance into allowing students back on campus. And through that whole process, we had to plan out the testing. Uh, and through the, through the ERT, as I mentioned earlier, the decision was that we were gonna test everyone coming back to campus. And so we, we started on a path of first, I think the first testing date was the end of May. Uh, for essential personnel and then we moved into a date in june and then uh, we had one in july and then 
as we brought students back, we, we opened it up and, and had multiple dates throughout um, August and into the early part of September. And, and that was just initial testing. Uh, and, and that was to get a baseline. And then as the semester started, we've, we've continued into doing surveillance. I said, Chuck, Jeff, the COVID dashboard, we have two positive cases on campus. Um, I mean, obviously it's, it's a concern, but compared to where other colleges, other parts of the country are regionally, it's, it's very, very low. Um, I guess just compared to the start of March, I mean, did you expect us to get this far in terms of the total number of positive cases? And I mean, we're, we're near the halfway mark of, of the fall semester here. Our goal from the beginning, once, once the decision was made that we were gonna move forward and open the college, um, you know, when I say the collective we, uh, you know, obviously the cabinet and then the, and the ERT, that was a decision. You know, the goal has been to get open, stay open uh, until Thanksgiving. Uh, that's when classes go remote, and and that goal still remains paramount. Uh, and uh, and I believe the things that, that that have been done, and and we continue to do as a group and, and an institution, and uh, students and faculty and staff and and community members have followed the things that we've asked them to do. And I, I do believe that has helped keep our numbers low. And and um, and all that we ask is, is that people continue to do the same things that they've been doing. And, and just because our numbers are low, that it's okay to, 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 you know what, I'll let this slide. You know what, I'm not gonna wear my mask today, or I'm gonna go do this, or I'm gonna go do that. You know, that's not what we need to do. Um, President Olson's letter the other day to campus, you know, and, and just encouraging people to continue and not let our guard down, that, that was perfect time um, because we, that's exactly what we don't want to have happen. You know, people need to follow through and, 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 and allow us as a whole, as a community to, to get to Thanksgiving, right? And, and, and accomplish what we started off to. Definitely, and, and I also talked to a bunch of student athletes, a few coaches the past few weeks of how the practice pods that I used brought to the proposal in early September to the coaches of breaking up the teams into these smaller groups. I think volleyball, uh, I talked to the player earlier today, had about four to five players so far. Um, and like, like I said, very fine sport, but based on what you've heard and maybe what you've seen if you popped your head in at a practice, Jeff, um, how the practice pod's been working? It's been working. You know, when we first looked at the whole, the, the big picture of things and, and, you know, how do we, how do we get athletics back and, and, and doing things in a safe manner? Uh, and, and you have to remember the whole thing that we're doing here is to keep people safe. It's, it's, it's the student athletes, it's the coaches, it's the support staff, it's everybody. And how can we do that in a manner uh, that's going to allow some level of activity, but safe activity. At the same time, we had to consider that our student athletes had had an absorbent amount of time off and in reality, double the amount of time off that they normally would have. Um, when you look at a typical summer, it's three months off. Um, when you incorporate uh, half of March, April, May, and then August, it really turned out to be a six month plus situation where teams were off. And so we had to, we had to take a look at, not only do we need to create a safe environment, uh, we also needed to allow time for student athletes to get back into shape, to get back into condition before we turn them loose. And when I say turn them loose is to go back to a full intense practice because what we don't want to create is we don't want to create a situation where their bodies aren't ready um, and they end up with major injuries. Uh, and so that was part of the rationale in creating this pod structure over a six week re-socialization period. And we took a guide from the NCAA and, and, and what we we're doing on campus and put that all together. And we came up with a, with a six week re-socialization plan. And right now we're in week five, week five of that. And, and I think it's gone well. I, I know, you know, some people may say it's, it's not fast enough. Um, but I think not only has our, has our, has our, our, our active COVID cases on campus stayed low. Um, and that also is, 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 is reflective in athletics, but it also, we, we have so far um, have been able to keep injuries to a minimum as well. Um, so again, we're, we're doing well, we're not finished yet. We got to finish it off and, and, and continue on, but so far so good. You mentioned we're at week five of the pod stage. That, that was my next question. When, when can we see some full team practices? Well, that's going to be around the corner. Uh, I'm not going to tell you exactly when because I haven't disclosed it to the coaches yet, but that's going to be coming out, matter of fact, either today or tomorrow. But 
it won't be long now. Uh, as we get to week six, that'll be the last week of the resocialization period. Uh, we will start moving into a controlled um, uh, contact situation, uh, and then we will we will ramp it up into bringing pods together, uh, and then into a, a full practice situation. So um, within the next few weeks is when that's when we're going to see that. That's that's a promising answer. I know a lot of fans are excited to see their teams back. Hopefully, and, uh, get back into swing of things here again. We're with Jeff Sage and Wildcat Weekly this week. And another point, Jeff, the campus announced earlier that the school for remote learning that you pointed out earlier is going to be from Thanksgiving until mid February to prevent the potential super spreading of COVID nineteen during the holiday season, the cold winter season as well uh you those watching there might you, they might have heard about um the crossing between the flu season the cold season with COVID-19 um how will that affect the student athlete community Jeff well we I have encouraged all of our coaches um actually even before that uh we had um we had preseason meetings with which you know we we I came in front of all the student athletes and I encouraged them to, to get their flu shot and uh, just uh, maybe a day or two ago, I forwarded an email from our CHIP Center onto all of our coaches, again, to remind them to encourage their student athletes to get a flu shot. Um, there are reasons why some people may not want to get a flu shot. Um, it could be, um, you know, personal beliefs. They could have an allergy. There could be other reasons. Maybe they had a bad reaction. But, you know, one of the myths out, one of the myths out there is that you can get the flu from the flu shot. That is a myth. That is not true. So it's important that people that... Um, you know, have an opportunity to, to, to get a flu shot uh, to protect themselves. Uh, I'm encouraging that strongly. Um, you know, and, 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 and the other reason is, is that it's not only going to help them protect them from the flu, but it's also going to help protect them from getting their immune system worn down to where then they might become uh, more susceptible to COVID. So, it's a it's a it's a it's a bang bang thing where again you, you you get your flu shot you're protected from the flu but it also is going to help potentially protect your immune system because you're just just going to get even not even the real flu but even sometimes those symptoms it's going to make your hopefully your immune system a bit stronger so that you can battle um, other viruses and colds that come around and 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 that's the mission I hope that um, you know those that that get it get it that can get it can get it um, and that uh, generally people just take care of themselves. Uh, and, um, you know, don't get worn down, get the rest, eat well, uh, and, and, and just generally take care of themselves. I know this is still kind of far away. We're only in October, uh, potentially some games in January, but, um, I mean, I'm guessing that fans in the stands is probably going to be a very long time for that to happen, but in terms of maybe pregame protocol for student athletes, coaches, and game day staff like you and I, um, what could we maybe expect if we're given the green light to start in, in, in January or February? Sure. Well, you know, one thing is going to be univer universal masking, right? Universal masking. And this is the other thing that's going to help protect people um, from the flu as well. So universal masking is, is going to be something that I think is going to be here to stay for the for, for a period of time. And, you know, that's going to be for all coaches, for, for any of the support staff, obviously for the medical staff. Um, there's going to be certain situations where we're going to ask our players uh, to, to, to be, have universal masking and it's to and from the venue. Um, obviously when they're in common spaces, there's going to be some situations um, when they're on their, their, their field of play or their court that the mask can come off, but we may ask them to put it back on when they're on the bench. So, it's universal masking. That's what I think is, is, is going to be here to stay for, the, for a period of time. Um, in terms of fans in the stands, there's, there's a lot of other people that are going to have to say about that. I, I think, uh, you know, as it stands, as we're, as we're talking on October 15th, I'm, I'm um, not expecting that. Let's just put it that way. If it happens, it happens. I think it'd be great if it could. Um, but as, it's, as of today, I just, I don't foresee that being, being the case, but it's only October 15th. So, you know, as we get to January, that's by the time we have a home game, it might be two months from now and, and or three months from now, actually. So it could be very different. We could be very different environment then. And, and there's a lot of things that can change between now and then. But if but if we had a home game today, it would be without fans. Definitely. Definitely. I mean, is there also uh, 
in terms of the sport, because uh, there is a conversation of basketball, how can they play five on five basketball um, versus something individual like tennis? I mean, is that is that being factored into play too as well from your end? Uh, yeah, I mean, when you when you when you look at different sports, part of the things that we look at is is it an indoor sport or is it an outdoor sport? Um, and we we can break that down further, but we'll just start on the top here. So indoor and outdoor sports. If we're outside, we we have um, a better a better opportunity to mitigate any spread of the virus because we're outside. It's open air. Um, we're not in an enclosed space with with um, you know air getting moved by a, by a machine or, or, or things like that. So outdoor outdoors is generally going to be considered safer. All right. So when you look at our soccer, our tennis, our track and field, cross country, um, you know, the, the elements of, of triathlon, uh, part of the elements of triathlon. So, you know, those things being outdoors is going to be better. Now, if we move inside, which we will as the weather starts to turn in our court sports, volleyball, basketball, uh, and even as we start to train indoors, we now we have to take a look at our venues. We have to take a look at our venues in terms of what is the square footage, uh, what is the um, air movement capability with our infrastructure, uh, also using other fans to move air, uh, opening the doors to get fresh air in. You know, the more that we can do that, the more that uh, we have the ability to mitigate any virus spread. And so those are all the things that we've been trying to do as we have, as in a controlled fashion, ramped up over the six week period, um, our, our, our resocialization together. When we started, everything was individualized. Now we're at a point in week five here where uh, we're, we're, we're having pods do things together, right? There's still no contact, but we're allowing them to do things together and, and introducing these things as we move along. And again, we'll continue to do that over the next couple of weeks until we get to that full, full practice uh, part. But even when we get to the full practice part indoors, we're still going to have doors open, fans on. Uh, masking if we're if we're not involved in the play, you know. So all these things are going to continue. It's just going to, again, we're taking another step forward, another step forward. Yeah. Even also in terms of cleaning the equipment, Jeff, each day, um, how critical is that? Was that a major emphasis in that in those first few meetings with coaches as well? It is, and it continues to be. And 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 whether that's equipment, whether that's ourselves, right? Your hands, right? Wash your hands. Avoid touching your, 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 your face. And, and again, that's where the, you know, that's where the mask comes in because with a mask on, we're, we're, we're less likely to touch our face. And so, um, you know, hand sanitizer, we have hand sanitizer, um, everywhere, uh, in the hallways, uh, you, you can't, you can't walk 20 paces without hitting a hand, hand sanitizer on the wall. We've got it, um, um, in between each drill. Uh, we have coaches have been instructed to, to clean off the equipment in between drills at the end of a session uh, to sanitize the vans after each use. Um, you know, if, 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 if um, uh, somebody goes and, you know, coughs or blows their nose, you know, they need to go do that, take care of it, go wash your hands or go sanitize your hands before you come back in and join the drill. So it's just being, it's being uh, more aware and self-conscious of all of these things. And it's, it's started to become routine. Um, with these things. And, and in addition, that prior to any session, we have our athletes do, do a screen. So they have, to, they have to complete a screen before they participate. And that includes a temperature. It includes, do they have any COVID-like symptoms? And in the last 14 days, have they traveled anywhere? Have they um, um, uh, had a positive COVID test? And um, uh, been around anybody that has COVID positive. So th th this, it's starting to become routine in, in what we're doing. And it's, it's, I don't want to say normal, it's not normal, but it's, it's starting to become routine. Jeff, you've been a part of the David community for the past 26 years. Um, congratulations on you know, the milestone of being a part of the family so far. Uh, what made you decide to get into the sports medicine and performance side of athletics? <laughs> Uh, yeah, I've, I've been, it's like night and day, you know, when I first started here as a, as a contracted athletic trainer in the mid nineties, I mean, it was, it was, there was only basketball. There was men's women's basketball. That was it. Uh, the only thing that's the same is the building, you know, it's, it was a different, didn't have lums. It wasn't called lums and gymnasium then, but it's the same building. Um, I'm at my office that I'm sitting in is the, is part of the old weight room. So many things have changed. The building's the same, but many things have changed. 
Um, but what, um, what drove me and to get into sports medicine, athletic training was, you know, I had, uh, I was a high school athlete. I had a couple injuries, uh, ankle injuries in particular. Um, I, I, one of them was pretty severe and I went for physical therapy and, you know, liked the idea of that. Um, my mother is a nurse and my sister is a nurse. So, you know, the medical field has always kind of been there present and, um, but I always wanted to do something in sports. So my first, my first thought was, you know, be a PE teacher, uh, be a phys ed teacher. Um, and then, uh, I also liked the medical side of things. So, you know, back in the day when, when we, when we had to meet with a guidance counselor about, you know, the talk, okay, what do you want to do when you grow up? Well, I sat across the desk and this is before computers, of course, before the internet. So I, the guidance counselor asked me, Hey, what do you want to do? And I said, well, I think I want to get into physical education. So we turned around, he had a big bookshelf behind him and he had college catalogs of all the, all the colleges locally. And so I, I said, physical education, he turned around and he pulled out a, a college catalog from, from Brockport, SUNY Brockport, and he threw it across the desk and he goes, here, take a read through that. They got a good PE program. Have a nice day. That was my guidance counseling right there. So I took that book home. I, I opened it, turned to the physical education page. I was flipping through and I came to this uh, section called athletic training. What is athletic training? I never heard of that before. And so I started reading at the description of it. And right then and there, I can, I can still remember sitting at home in a, in a recliner in, in the house I grew up in, reading that paragraph, saying to myself, that's what I want to do. That's who I want to be. And that's, you know, that's what it was. I went to Brockport, got my degree, moved out here to Buffalo and, you know, got a job. And shortly thereafter started here. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Kind of like, the old saying, if you love what you're doing, you're, you're never going to work a day in your life. Does that fit for you too? It does. It does. Um, and it has. And, you know, there's obviously challenges that come with our profession. Uh, the hours are long. Uh, the days are longer. Um, you know, we, we do have to sacrifice time with our family, which is, which is a challenge. And, you know, you have to work uh, to, to, to make that happen. And, you know, I think that that's one thing that all athletic trainers need to do better at and coaches too. anybody with athletics is, you know, you have to be able to manage your time. And, and, and sometimes we, we don't do it as well as we should and, and we can get burned out. And, and, um, you know, that's, that's the one downside of what it is that we do or, or is, is the hours and the time. And, um, you know, we, we just need to work it at, uh, you know, making sure we set aside time for our families. Is there anything, Jeff, that you look forward to the most when the calendar hits mid-August? Hmm. When it hits mid-August? What when the semester starts for Damon? Yeah, you know, uh, one. I just said something that you know it's not great about our profession, but one good thing about our profession is, is, is I've always looked at this too. Is there's is, there's a change in seasons. Okay, fall, winter, spring, and 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 it's not only the seasons outside, but it's the sports seasons. So in some ways, you know, you, as an athletic trainer, you, you, it's difficult to get bored um, because you, you've got the fall seasons and the teams that, that align with the fall seasons. And then you, you know, you cross over into the winter seasons and then you cross over into the spring season. So it's a little bit something different each along the way. And, and, and it almost builds into this, you know, uh, renewal as you come along. So, you know, when, when, when August hits, obviously, uh, you know, football is primarily on the mind. We don't have football here, but, but it's the, it's the other, it's the other fall sports. So it's the soccer, it's the volleyballs, it's, you know, the start of the start of the semester, the, the renewal, the, the things like that. So that's, that's kind of what runs through my mind. Um, you know, when, when the calendar turns to August. You mentioned that you're the assistant athletic director for sports and medicine, uh, here at Damon, is there anything maybe the greatest changes on campus with that program specifically since you started here, Jeff? Well, just uh, absolutely. I mean, just within athletics. I mean, I, I was. Um, we have we have four athletic trainers here now. Now I was here by myself, but by, by myself for uh, for fourteen years. I was here by myself. In 2009, we actually hired a part-time athletic trainer to help out, and then we actually got a full-time in 2010. Uh, so there was there was two of us at that period of time, and then over the years, over the next couple of years, we've added we've added a couple more. Um, so just by the nature of adding sports, again, when I started here, there was two, 
you know, now we're up to um, uh, 16, 17, um, if you count all the individual uh, indoor and outdoor tracks. So, you know, it's, it's one of those things where, um, you know, we, we were, it got to be too much for one person. It probably was from the beginning. Uh, when we started adding sports and right around 2000, we got to eight sports, um, particularly, particularly being off campus with soccer and some other things. So the, the addition of staff is a huge change and a, and a huge benefit to our, to our student athletes. And, um, you know, the facilities, the, the building is the same, but modifications have gone into the facilities. Our athletic training room that we had for, that I had for many, many years, uh, for 20 of those years, because we've only been in this space now in our sixth year, um, was, was a 220 square foot room. You know, now, for the last six years, we've we've been over here, and, and you know we're in a space that's that's uh, right around 1,100, and uh, that's including offices. So, you know, we've had to grow uh, to to meet our demand. And even on some days, uh, maybe not this year because 2020 is different for everybody. But in in the last few years, even this room has been too small. Uh, and and so, there's many things that have changed. Obviously, staffing has been huge. Uh, I'm not, I'm not even sure how many full-time staff we have anymore in athletics, but for a long time, it was only three. Uh, for many years, it was only three. And now it's, um, I'm sure it's in the double digits for sure. I just don't know the count, but many things have changed over the years. Um, you know, the, the, the movement to, from NAI to NCAA, I believe had, had something to do with that. And, you know, the, the structure of the NCAA from a health and safety standpoint has, has provided a, a, a better structure for the, for our student athletes. Um, uh, and, um, and I think, you know, overall things have, things have improved, uh, tremendously. Like I said earlier, it's like night and day. Um, there aren't, if I tell stories about those days, people aren't going to believe me and, uh, because nobody was here to see it, but, but I did. Yeah. Yeah. You've been the, one of the main consistents here on main street the past, you know, many years. Uh, and Jeff, before I let you go, I, I know you're a busy guy. Um, and thanks again for everything you've done to, to be the, the point guard, we could say of running this. Uh, emergency response team here in athletics. Um, I guess from your standpoint, what's maybe a, a realistic projection of how this, the end of this fall and, and this winter could go, not just here, but, but maybe in the country based on what you've read and seen? Well, again, I think everybody needs to do their part, right? And that's um, universal masking. It's obviously uh, taking care of yourselves, uh, disinfecting things. And you go to the grocery store, you know, take a wipe and wipe off the handle, you know, and, and, and make sure you put the cart back and that, that you just don't put it back in circulation. You put it back over here where somebody else is going to wipe it down or you wipe it down yourself. Um, you know, you're taking care of yourself, taking care of your, 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 your fellow person, you, universal masking so that you're protecting other people. Um, get your flu shot if you can, um, you know, limit mass gatherings uh you know we tell we tell our student athletes to you know be cognizant of what it is that you're doing who you're going with what who you're spending time with and and just because you you're friends with somebody doesn't you don't know where where they've been or, or or things like that so we need to be cognizant of of all those things and and um one of the other things when it comes to our student athletes as well as our staff is that if you're feeling poorly right you're feeling ill you got to say something right nobody's going to get in trouble um, because this is a one, one analogy or one saying that I've used throughout this whole process is, you know, this is about, this is about the we, not the me, right? This is about the collective we, and it's not about me personally. So you, we have to all think about that. And I think if we do, as we have, and I think if we continue to do that, you know, I think we'll, I think we'll make it through this. Wise words again from Jeff Sage. Uh, Jeff, we thank you for joining us this week. Um, but thanks again for what you've been doing. And hopefully when we see each other again, you know, we'll be on the sidelines getting the teams uh, stretched out and, and ready to go, okay? Sounds good. Thanks, Joe. Thanks again for watching, everybody. Wildcat Weekly. We'll see you next time. Take care.